Detective Comics Annual 2021, Mariko Tamaki and Matthew Rosenberg writing. I assume Rosenberg is scripting and Tamaki was the, the story, but uh, just a hunch. Probably. Uh, David Lapham is on the art. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, this is kind of the, the prologue to this, this 10-week event that Detective mm-hmm. Comics is going to do. Uh, and does factor in the tower, you know, Chase is brought up again uh, throughout the issue. Uh-huh. Um, so, and I like a lot what this issue does. There's definitely some things and, like, uh, techniques in here that I'm not <laughs> a big fan of. Uh, I like... I like the core idea of what Nightwing is trying to teach Bruce. Mm-hmm. I don't like that Bruce has forgotten this again. Yeah. Uh, sure. Um, I mean, I, I'm more talking. So I, I got a little worried at the start, is that we're, we're doing flashbacks to Bruce with his parents before they died, mm-hmm. and I'm like, what are we going to shoehorn into his origin or into his backstory? And I actually was okay with most of it in the sense that it was it was largely just like an example of seeing his dad work with a patient, but it was a patient who was a killer, and there was this moral question of should he help someone who's been a murderer, right? And like that's obviously the core question that's going to like be part of the theme of the story, and that's cool. Um, and I was fine with that because yeah, of course his dad, he saw, he saw his dad do his job, right? This is not like that a regular a sort of something for him to see. Um, when it started hinting that the killer in present day was the son of this guy, uh, I sort of rolled my eyes a little bit and went, "Oh, this is." Mm. It's, is it? It's the moment where young Bruce meets the, yeah. the kid, right? Yeah. And that's yeah. the moment where you're like, "Oh." That, that was the moment where I'm like, okay, you're doing the thing that I hate. I kind of hate a little bit. That's how a costume made out of chicken bones is pretty metal. I do like the costume. No, I like the costume. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> I, I, all the present day stuff, I actually really like for the most part yeah. because uh, I think the, the tone of having this serial killer going after, uh, what was it again? Blood donors? Not blood donors. Clinic. Uh, yeah, so there, people use the clinic. With, yeah. Yeah, but there's a thing with, with that, the, that even the, the character's dad was like, the blood is sacred and you can't give it to a blood bank. And there's definitely like belongs in Arkham vibes, like uh, definitely going on. Definitely part of a cult vibes going on. Yeah. Yeah. And so I did like that stuff and that transferring to a son makes sense. I just didn't need, you know, young Bruce and this young meager man to meet when they were kids. Like that was a little bit step too far. Like maybe show him whatever, if that's what you want to do, because you're telling a story about, like, not the soul of Gotham, but just, like, this is something that's always been going on in Gotham, right? Like, this this battle in between, you know, the people like Thomas Wayne and the people he's trying to help that some people would, you know, say they don't deserve the help or whatever. Um, and that's what makes Thomas and, and Bruce similar, is that they're going to help no matter what, right? So I like all of that, but just say, uh, like Pete said, the kid being right there, and it's just being so spot on. It's just a little bit weird. Just a bit on the nose, and it's just, it's just the obvious yeah. thing that I wish they had some restraint with sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, yeah, I like the actual horror vibes. Like all all the the, the scenes of like uh, the the modern day. What what, what they call him again? The, the man? meager man. The meager man, right? So the yeah. the modern meager man, like running down with this cloak and these chicken wing wings <laughs> that he's like yeah. made like down the park, like stalking his victim. Yeah. Like I love this. Yeah. I, I, this like. You know, serial killer is on the list in the park. Like, try to kill yeah. people. I like that. Just in case you haven't read this, we should say, when we say chicken wings, they are made out of chicken bones, but yes. they're not shaped like chicken wings. They look like, um, like angel wings, almost. They look like yeah. angel wings, but yeah, they're made out of chicken bones, which is probably my favorite part of the issue, is when Nightwing and, and Bruce are on the the roof of this chicken place, and Dick's like, oh, so we met here, right? Because, of, you know, this, that, and... and uh, Bruce's like, no, I, I, I analyzed the chicken bones and it tracked me, it tracked to this restaurant because of their proprietary blend. And Dix is <laughs> like, yeah, I should have known that you're not about, you don't love chicken I, wings. I love the idea, though, that Bruce has uh, analyzed the proprietary yes. blends of, of every, you know, chicken place's yeah. seasoning in, in the entire city. Yeah. And so I just love that. And Dix was like, of course, what was I thinking? I just, I love that, you know, if that's Rosenberg putting that in there, I do like the voice between them like that relationship is spot on yeah uh so the nice thing is though is i don't think that the, i think this character's here in this issue as is an example of someone who's clearly disturbed who needs help mm-hmm. right? right and uh, they should still help him despite the fact that he is a killer he's, he's not just someone to toss away and be disregarded and right. this isn't like 
Joker level that he might get out and do it again. Like this dude actually needs help. Yeah, well, well, the point I'm making is is that I don't think this character is going to be the core villain of this next ten issue event. I think he's oh, yeah, yeah. he's here as a one issue kind of like set up of the themes. I think the meager man is a like like Connor was saying. There's like kind of culty vibes going on. Like it's that, possible it's part of something bigger that we'll see. Yeah, yeah that I feel like the, it's coming out through him. Oh yeah, I'm not saying yeah. that we won't see him again. I'm just saying that I don't expect him to be this like central figure that the whole story is going to revolve mm. around by any means. Oh no, this this was more no. a thematic setup rather than yeah. a, a lead in direct for the story. I guess I think this is. If, if for whatever reason you're planning on reading Shadows of the Bat in the, the yeah. weekly detective comic stuff, but you don't read this issue, I think you'll still be fine. Yeah, uh, I, would, I would suspect so. This is more a thematic setup rather than, oh, these are all the plot threads you need to know. Yeah, obviously the cult that like that saves them at one point, and he wakes up and they've all got their torches, and like, we are the Gotham's lost son and daughters, and uh, we have fallen through the cracks. Uh, like... And there's like a guy with like a, a mask and a hood and like a staff. <laughs> like I'm like, we are the forgotten. And I'm like, what is this? Some LARPers? So what's going on here? <laughs> uh, so but you know, it's setting up that there's this this part of the city and these type of characters that we're going to be dealing with. Um and there's obviously some investigation stuff that I think we can gloss over well enough. Um but there's a nice fun sequence where uh, he jumps out the window and Nightwing like dives out after him. Uh, and tells yeah. Bruce not to like you know latch on to him till he says, uh, "It's a really nicely paced sequence, I think." Uh, and the the following and then the following page, well, the close ups of the actual grappling going around his legs and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's a nice touch, um, and I also think thematically it's kind of nice that you know Dick's trying to say, but you know we need to change how this is done. We can't just have another Arkham. Uh, I like the idea that this represents that Dick's the one diving head first, but he still needs Bruce to be the anchor. And that's just kind of representative of the the story as a whole, uh. So that's kind of neat. So yeah, like so obviously Chase Meridian shows up, and it's like yeah, she's going to be, you know, mm -hmm. taking over the new Arkham Tower, uh, and it sets up that. Um. So I also I think there's a lot of thematic links between this issue and the Nightwing annual, sure. in yeah. uh -huh. the role of Robin, and you know, in this case Nightwing being kind of that moral center again here, and, mm -hmm. and reminding Bruce that no, you've got to be better. Essentially, uh, it's, it's you know it's it's probably a core idea of what Robin is. You know, like like when Tim Drake decided that he you know Bruce needed a Robin because Bruce was out of control, right? And this is again you know you know Dick's filling that void where it's like, hey, you got to remember you got you got to help them no matter what, and you have kind of lost sight of that. And I like that from Dick. I just don't like that Bruce has kind of got to learn that lesson again. Well, I mean, if we if we can look at it macro, I mean, since losing Alfred, he's been kind of a, a lost ship, sure. you know. Yeah, so, it's so only just, yeah, it's only just the last year that he's kind of came back to the family again, and it's mm -hmm. felt a bit more, mm. you know. So, I, like, yeah, it, it kind of works. Um, it's not a bad issue. I I like the thematics that it sets up, and I like uh, some of the the serial killer stuff and the the mood of that. But it does do a, there's a few techniques in here that I'm not super thrilled about. The art is a little bit hit and miss for me. Uh, mm -hmm. There's there's definitely moments. I actually, bizarrely enough, I think the flashbacks with young Bruce and his parents all look quite good because they they kind of fit the tone they're going for. But I think some of the stuff with Batman and Nightwing, like when they're like hunting the killer, like their faces are a bit off. Or uh... I, I think it, the faces in general, specifically the lips, are inconsistent most of the issue. Yeah, the lips are what I was really what was bugging me. I think me. that's more just his style. I think the the overall tone. And vibe, I I like throughout. Uh, like I said, the action sequence where Nightwing jumps out after him, I think that's really well paced, and like you know the the panels starting to be a bit more like skewed and stuff, and like give give you a sense of motion. Like I think all that stuff's really well thought out. Yeah, I don't know who's on the colors, um, but the stuff at night when Bruce and Dick are kind of sat up on the tower before mm -hmm. they jump off and go into just before that, you know, he's running through the park. Uh, all with the you know, like the the red and the black on the sky behind them. I think that stuff is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, the stuff in the part with the killer chasing after the guy is actually really good. Uh, so yeah, I can see uh, a bit up and down um, for me. I know young Bruce eating the hot dog looked weird as hell. That's part of the lips, isn't it? Uh, so yeah. <laughs> well, the lips are usually involved in eating, and uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that was the that, one that that's stuck specifically it out. that what makes it look weird, especially because yeah. it's a close up on the face and. Because he's eating, that's 
like the focal points. That's where your eyes are drawn to as well. Oh man, okay. That's why I know this name. I was like, why do I know the name? This is the artist from Stray Bullets with Azarella. Oh yeah. So mm. yeah. All right, cool, cool. Uh, all right, Matt, what are you giving Detective Comics? Uh, I'm gonna give this a seven. Car. Yeah, it's a seven for me. Yeah, seven. Yeah, straight sevens. Seven going to seven.